Hello everyone, this is Josh, aka The Biscuit Eater, and I wanted to thank you all for joining me on the fourth episode of my long-form Let's Play of Orwell, Episode 1. In case you're new to this series, this is a story of a faceless employee sitting behind one of the screens of the most invasive social internet investigative companies in the nation. Our job here is to observe, report, and hopefully save lives while infringing on the basic rights of the people. If this is your first time in the series, thank you for joining. You can find a link to the playlist in the description down below. Otherwise, sit back, remember that nothing said on the internet is ever truly deleted, and enjoy the ride. In our previous episode, we delved deep into the history of our primary suspect, Nina, a former army vet discharged for going AWOL, unable to legally work due to being branded a felon for it, and struggling to support her son appeared to be wanting revenge on the party for their part in the death of the man she loved. However, in trying to apprehend her after gaining solid evidence of her guilt behind the bombings, Nina was unfortunately killed, mere moments before we discovered that Abraham had been motivating her all along. Today, we lean in hard to our investigation of Abraham Goldfels and try to dig deeper into the identity of the wily initiate both of whom seem far more involved in all this than originally suspected. Hopefully, we can do this without any more blood being shed. But first, without any further ado, let's cue the intro. All I need is me, myself, and I. Hey, hey. Sometimes I wish I was somebody else. All right, and here we go. Welcome back, everyone. So, going back and logging into the account and doing our basic recap. We, yesterday, we saved the mall. The Circle Mall had been saved from a bomb attack on day two. The remaining member, as the last remaining member of Thought, Nina Maternova, needed to be investigated. The suspect was killed. She was killed in the attempt to make an arrest. Nina Maternova, we discovered that she is considering considered rather an explosive expert due to her experience clearing mines during military service. We were able to associate with her associate her with every location of the bombings. She did decide to flee. We sent an intervention team after her. Her motivation seemed to be dominated by revenge for her deceased boyfriend and the safety bill prohibiting her from work. She was killed when she offered resistance to the intervention team trying to arrest her. Further information gathered on the other persons of interest, Harrison O'Donnell. He has condemned the bombings and said he only predicted bombings to sell his point. He called on people to be vigilant and supportive of the position of the government in his column. Juliet Carrington. She has a troubled relationship with her parents, and she ended up having a bad start into 2017. Our new target of interest, Initiate, has been in contact with two target persons, so an investigation has been authorized. He planned to ha hack the party website, which was averted. And then we have Abraham Goldfels, who apparently motivated Nina Maternova to commit the Vaughn bombings. But we need to find out why that seems to go against the character we had determined so far for him. So let's go ahead and start day four. Now, I know at the end of my last video that I said day five. That was a mistake on my part. Day five will be the last episode, but that is still yet another episode beyond this one. So anyway, starting day four. Episode four, memory hold. Memory hole. I can get this right. That's okay. Oh, back again. Hmm? I still can't believe what happened yesterday. We got the perpetrator of the bombings. Everything looks that way, but at what cost? I mean, did we do the right thing? Flagging Miss Maternova as dangerous? Did we kill her in the end? Ugh, I wish you could talk to me, at least this one time. Speaking into this one-way channel feels like barking at a wall endlessly. Worst of all, as you found out, Abraham Goldfell seemed to have initiated, incited rather, and planned the assaults. We need to get him, today. There must be some lead on him we have overlooked. We'll keep observing all others in case we learn something new. Is there a way to... Ah, oh well. Bonton Police Database, Mount Nova, Nina, April 15, 2017. 
Arrest date, April 15, 2017. Charge, multiple homicide. Arresting officer, redacted. Holding facility, redacted. When prompted to surrender, the suspect instead shouted out aggressively while producing a firearm, aiming at one of the executing special agents. The suspect then opened fire, wounding special agent redacted on the left shoulder. In defense, special agent redacted drew his pistol and returned fire, as the situation briefing had already suggested to proceed with extreme caution. The suspect was hit in the chest twice, causing her collapse. An ambulance was called, but the paramedics were unable to resuscitate the target. Time of death was announced at the scene. We have a phone call. Harrison O'Donnell speaking to Juliet. Ugh, yeah, O'Donnell speaking. Harrison, this is Juliet. Isn't this your office number? You working on su Sunday? Look, as much as I appreciate that I am once again so important to you, I am a bit in between things. Harrison, Nina is dead. Quit bullshitting me. Not funny. Take a look at the TNB if you, you don't believe me. What the? What? I... Saturday, Sunday, she works a lot, but then again, so do we. She's been associated with the Bont and Bombings. I can't believe it. Nina, you stupid piece of... Why in all hell? There's more. I spoke to her yesterday. She called me. I never heard her so scared. Said she was being tracked by someone and needed to skip town. She just wanted to let me know what was going on, in case anything happened to her. Then she packed a few things and went on her way. She did message me about someone tracking her as well. Thought it was a hacker who screwed with our page. What did she tell you? She suspected someone was to be wiretapping her calls. She wasn't exactly willing to talk about it. I don't know for sure, but I think it could have been the police. Oh, this is effing brilliant. How long until they discover the connection to us, huh? They might be listening to this very call as we effing speak about Nina. Why would they? We didn't do anything, or did you? No, damn it. But it's becoming blatantly obvious these government ass assholes are trying to set us up. The bombs were exactly where we hid our protests. Where we held our protests. Then those letters with the song Abe is obsessed about. Let's go back to Harrison. Seems to be the natural reaction. They, they must be setting us up because we didn't do anything for sure. I almost understand it. Almost. And now you tell me that you've been in contact with Nina just yesterday? Pretty much the proof they've been waiting for. We're cooked. Huh, you really believe the government has it in for us? I thought you and the Gov were best friends now, forever, best friends forever now, after reading your opinion pieces. What reason would they be after us? Why now? What did we do? Speaking up against them one too many times? The F do I know? Hmm, we should seek help, just in case. Help? Who's gonna help us? Joseph Langley might be worth a shot. Who? Cassandra's lawyer, don't you remember? A friggin' lawyer? What do you want him to do? Bust law enforcement? The government? He understands their situation. Abe also knew Joseph. I talked to him recently. Joseph is coming back into play. Abe knew Joseph. They knew each other? Very well. This could be a new lead. I will request to consider Joseph Langley a target. Yet another person in our database, because we're so convinced we're doing the right thing. Huh. We have clearance to proceed. We are going to need to know some basics on what Joseph Langley, who Joseph Langley is. Remember to check old sources. Other than that, focus on hints to Abraham Goldfels. He is the center of the crux of all this. Bod, really, Jules? They make the laws. They break the laws. We, we will need to speak in a language they understand. Nothing, not in one they own. So I take it you got a much better plan, huh? We need to get the people on our side. Turn things around. Abraham knew that. Yeah, you're right. He did know that. So now you're set on meticulously achieving something that thought spent one and a half years attempting? That's this is not about thought. This is me defending myself. Well then, what's your defense plan? There is this guy. A guy. Uh-huh. Goes by the name of Initiate. Might actually be a girl. Who cares? Look, this hack on the thought blog was it was a very elaborate hack. Our site is super safe. I'm not an amateur. That guy, girl, whatever is skilled. An initiate mission having no sympathy for the gov. You're going to trust a random hacker who targeted Thought simply because he said he doesn't like the government? Why would he first threaten us and then work with us? Leave it to me, Jules. I'll persuade Initiate with ease. Imagine the possibilities with our own hacker. Okay, you know what? Have it your way. I, I'll have it mine. 
arguing like, like the good old days. Is your Utel alias still Julesy underscore Kerr? Might be more secure than calling each other. Yeah, it is. Let's get going. There goes my chill Sunday morning. My mind is still spinning around what happened to poor Nina. Watch yourself, okay? What, are you worried about me, Jules? I didn't know you still... Oh, no. Bye, Harry. We got headlines. Alleged perpetrator of Bonton bombings dead. Bonton. Investigative success in Bonton bombing case. Alleged perpetrator killed in her apartment. Explosive device was discovered. Delacroix shows relief. Listen, I don't like the reports either. We needed to cover the fact that this happened somewhere in the public. We cannot frighten people. Sometimes their truth and ours have to divert for the common good. Nina F. M., alleged perpetrator of the Bonton bombings, was dishonorably charged in 2011. The perpetrator of the recent attacks across Bonton is dead. A special forces team stormed the flat of Nina M. yesterday evening after evidence suggested that she was the lead suspect in the case. When confronted by the special forces, Nina M. drew a firearm and fired at police. The team returned fire, killing the suspect in the process. Upon searching the apartment of the deceased, special forces discovered nearly half a dozen additional homemade explosive devices, which Nina had created with easily accessible chemicals, hardware, and military equipment. Investigative forces have indicated that the military-grade equipment belonged to Nina M. during her military service, which she was allowed to keep when she was dishonorably discharged in 2011. Whether this might pose a motive for Nina M. to commit the assault is only speculative at this time. Upon receiving the news, Secretary of Security Catherine Delacroix showed relief. Our endeavor to find this evil individual has finally been crowned with success. I have never had any doubt about the capability of our investigative methods. This concludes a dark chapter in the history of Bonton and all the nation, Delacroix stated. Rainstorm Rogers is Bonton and Fairview. Bonton and Fairview, strongest walls of low Matilda uproot trees, damaged cars and buildings in the Bonton and Fairview area. Few people get injured. Four people get injured. Forecast had predicted a bad weather for Saturday, but no one had been expecting herring, herring results of this magnitude. Trees were uprooted in the Bonton and Fairview area, obstructing streets and burying cars underneath them. Luckily, the, there have been no casualties reported, with only four people being injured. In contrast to the Material damage, in contrast to that, the material damage is expected to reach into the millions. Firefighters in the area were called to more than 300 operations and temporarily had a hard time to respond. Meteorologists have confirmed the storm caused by Low Matilda is one of the 10 worst rainstorms in the history of Bonton, a fair few since the very beginning of weather recordings. Events interview with Jim founder Ronson. Dewurst. Our very own Jeffrey Paxson got the exclusive chance to interview Jim founder T Tyler Ronson after he opened his 100th fitness studio. Your startup just opened on the hundred the opened the hundredth gym in the nation. How does that make you feel? Ronson, good. The Projection Magazine reported you actually went to the grand opening in person to test out all the equipment. Let me emphasize this. Every single piece by yourself before you would give the green light. Is that accurate? Of course. I did I did that in every gym studio I've opened. You must... Really, you must be kidding me for sure. I do not kid. So, I understand you can't come from a pretty poor background. Your family had six children to feed, and your father was unable to find work for a large amount of your childhood. How did you overcome these obstacles to become a nationwide respected entrepreneur? Ronson, my father always told my brothers and me, boys, there is not a problem you cannot solve. Go out to face whatever hinders you and punch it in the face as hard as you can. So I did exactly that. An interesting metaphor. It's not a metaphor. What do you mean by that? I went out to the ba bank of my parents. They were highly indebted to this bank. I went straight to the manager and punched them in the face as hard as I could. I have to admit I am, well, surprised to say the least. What effect did that have? At first, he went, he went down pretty hard, hit his head on the glass table. But when he had recovered, he was impressed by my strength and my boldness. He suggested an investment model for a gym chain. I then came up with the, with the name Jim. 
So what does Jim stand for anyways? I think you never actually told anyone. Who, who, oh, will you tell our readers? It stands for Jim. It's all capitals because I thought it would look like it had more energy that way. Wow. Procedure closing raises many potatoes. Okay. Investigation to the malicious injury of, injury of a police officer has been dropped due to lack of evidence. Okay, that's right. This is getting more in, information on our lawyer buddy. No other chunks there. Harris O'Donnell, off to a slow start on this chilled Sunday morning. This is going to be my day. I can effing feel it. Oh, in case anybody does recognize the woman next to me, let me know. Just kidding, very obviously. Don't be mad at me, Marka. Pete Fletcher, so this is life you get good money. F this is life when you get good money from the National Corruptor? I get it now. Ah, he's getting called a, called a sellout. some time ago, wasn't it? Joseph Lingley opened his own law office in the city of Bonton some years ago after his graduation from Seligan in 1992. His law office is probably best known for having defended construction entrepreneur Elwood Hendricks in what gained public attention as the lion's share scandal. Offices of Joseph Langley. Welcome. Profile. After my release from prison, I got involved in a violent knife fight and was facing a jail term for parole violation. Joseph submitted a plea for mitigation, which was granted. Now I'll just spend six months in community service, then I'll be free man again. Mr. Joseph Langley, your liable partner in law. Joseph Lingley studied criminal law at Stellingham University in Bonn. Instantly, after his graduation in 1992, Joseph Lingley partnered with Catherine Delacroix, a fellow student who is now officiating as Secret Secretary of Security in the government, to found a criminal law office of their own, Delacroix and Lingley Legal. Wow, I didn't even know that she had a locker going before she actually joined politics. Mr. Lingley definitely has been around. So far, so good on Mr. Lingley's background. Excluding the connection to Delacroix, everything seems unsurprising. What we need to know right now are his connections to Abraham, Abraham Goldfels, and perhaps, and possibly the other members of Thought. When Miss Delacroix realized her ambition for politics in 1997, she and Mr. Langley decided to part ways. Joseph Langley kept his office, which he was renamed to Law Offices of Joseph Langley. Since then, since then, Joseph Langley has taken the side of the defense in the courtroom innumerable times. His record includes everyday cases as well as high-profile media field trials. Curriculum vitae. Okay. 
career abroad in Argentina in 1990, military service in the Army of the Nation in 1983. I doubt that means he has any combat experience. Expertise. My wife made a complaint about me being abusive and I got charged with assault and battery for it. I turned to Joseph Langley who successfully impeached her, her credibility. The scales of justice tipped in my favor thanks to this man. Expertise. We have experience you can rely on. Joseph Langley knows how to handle cases of various complexity. In as many years as a, as a justice advocate, he has gained invaluable skills in a widespread area of the law. Excuse me, my goodness. He engages in cases of the following areas. Assault, violent crimes, domestic violence, drug possession, gun possession, driving under the influence, corruption, contract violations, forgery and fraud, identity theft, copyright infringements, parole and probation violations. Significant cases. Joseph Langley's track record includes... The, the lion's share scandal, which received nationwide media coverage in 2010. In that case, he defended construction and entrepreneur Elwood Hendricks, who had taken on a government contract for highway construction. When it became apparent his road pavement was of inferior quality than paid for, Hendricks' firm became the subject became subject to corruption investigations. Joseph Langley took on the defense for Hendricks, during which he was able to convincingly argue that Hendricks had actually acted on behalf of the Secretary of Transportation, Greenway who had taken the largest part of the money put aside in the fraudulent process. The case ended with a minor sentence to Hendricks, whereas Greenway had to step down with sentence to imprisonment. Yeah, I remember that perfectly well. No way anybody missed that case at that time. That was either courageous or dumb. Seemingly it turned out to be the former for some time. Now it might be the latter. contact. Are you facing criminal charges? Don't hesitate to contact us. Never bet or rely on your luck when it comes to criminal charges. Bet on us. If you require assistance, consultation, or simply have a question, don't hesitate to take a second to call. And we got an email address and a password. Our offices are located in the heart of Bonn. Come visit us at 27B Can Cannonbury Square, 2B5X Mon. Please contact us in advance to schedule an appointment. Thank you. Okay, no pending messages. Are right there? Pages. We do have pending messages. Okay. Um. Oh goodness. So from Joseph Langley, helping hand. Hello, Joseph. I assume you know who I am. It has come to my attention that one of your clients, a certain Cassandra Watergate, is currently held in investigative custody. As far as I'm informed, the, both of you have some kind of liaison. While this is not my concern, it's heartbreaking to know lovers are apart from each other. I'm in a position to change that if you deliver incriminating material for a person named Abraham Goldfels, a member of the activist group Thought, of whom I know you have been in contact with. Let me keep. Let me know if you're willing to assist me in this, and I will see to it. Cassandra receives a helping hand. All right. Are you kidding me? Is this our hacker friend again? Call with Joseph Langley or chat. No, it, yep. So, chat. Hello, am I talking to Joseph Langley? Hello there, yes, you are, and who would you be? I'm Juliet, Cassandra's friend. We spoke a couple days ago. Yes, of course. Hey, Juliet, how can I help you? Honestly, I don't quite know where to start. By the way, I heard from Cassandra. I'm sorry to get back to you yet. Really? That's good. Where is she? It's not so good. She got arrested. What? Why? I 
I was informed Cassandra had been taken into custody. Apparently, they have new evidence regarding the attack on that officer. I tried to call immediately, but they claim she doesn't want to talk to me. That's their official statement. Where did they suddenly dig up new evidence from? I have no idea, but I, I've just had it with their shenanigans. It's so just so annoying that I cannot talk to her. I've been trying every precedent I know to get in contact with her. Now, this sadly lines perfectly with another incident. You read the TMB today? You mean about the Bonn bombings perpetrator? Yes, that woman who died? Nina? She was a friend. An awesome member of our group, I thought. I'm sorry, I had no idea. It's okay, you couldn't possibly have known. You're right, this is very confusing. Come to think of it, Abraham asked me for a favor for someone called Nina once, quite some time ago. I hope... It wasn't this, Nina. Might well be. I, I, I doubt Abe knew many of the people named Nina. What was the favor about? A favor from Miss Mananova? This could be important. Follow this lead. Oh, it's just a small thing. Nothing of importance. I spoke to Harrison. Another meeting of our, another member of our group. We agree the police might be investigating us next. There might be, they might be onto everything in thought now. They might look, lock us up straight away. I mean, can they do that? Well, even the safety bill, even with the safety bill in place, they still need solid indication that you're involved in the actual bombings. Although, honestly, I'm not sure what constitutes a solid indication these days. Is there anything we can do that you can do, maybe? Juliet, I appreciate that you've come to me. It really is worrying, and I would so take this on immediately if it weren't for Cass. I made the mistake to set false priorities once. I owe Cassandra to get her cut, get her out of this first. Joseph, Nina is dead. She got shot. There's no telling if we're next. Oh well. If I'd be in that situation, I would be trying to get my girlfriend out of there too. I need some time to read into more specialized codes of law again. Write some emails, see if there's legal limbo or basically anything I can do for Cassandra. Maybe I'll come across something that might help you as well. After all, those capes... Those cases co seem connected. It's all I can offer. I hope you understand. I do. It's kind of a relief. Thank you. I wish I could do more. I will let you know. Okay. Bye. Goodbye, Juliet. Oh, goodness. A lot of stuff. Urgent request. Laverne, please excuse me mailing you on a Sunday, but I have an urgent matter at hand. I am driving to the office now. I need to use my private notebook. Can you please unlock the blank, MAC address blank, for a local area network and server for me? Oh, there was one thing I needed to mention. The head engineer warned me that apparently there was a glitch that caused devices we were monitoring to malfunction at times. You needn't worry, though. The issue has, has been fixed. RE urgent request. Joseph, it's done. Don't work too much. Okay, we've got a new laptop to dig through. take a brief pause here and I will be right back. I just need to stand up and walk around for a little bit as I, my energy is starting to lag just a tiny bit near the end of the day. I will be right back. Thank you for waiting, folks. All right, lovelies. Thank you again for your patience there. As I mentioned, I uh, had a little bit of a energy lag to 
go into really short order without getting political. Um, the current global environment has made it harder for me to go out and get the exercise that I would regularly do. Um, go, out, go out and get the walks that I normally would do to keep my energy levels up and my, my uh, metabolism going. Um, I am, as I've mentioned in previous videos, immunocompromised, which means I am at a higher level of danger of both catching what's going around and suffering far more negative consequences of catching it. And since there are a lot of people out there who are not taking greater precautions or thinking of those of us like myself who are more likely to be negatively impacted by someone else's carelessness, I have not been able to go out and be as active as I want to. And frankly, it's a lot harder to do that sort of thing inside a what 20 by 15 foot room so sometimes I just need to get up and walk around the, the house just to get my brain back and working my blood flowing again and my energy levels up hopefully I'll be able to make it now through the rest of this episode uh, thank you again for uh, <laughs> bearing with me anyways where were we? We were looking for more pieces of information on Joseph Langley, Initiate, and uh, and uh, Abraham. We had... Okay, we've got everything with Juliet. We got everything with Joseph. It's just the messages between Harrison and Initiate. So let's go ahead and bring up these two. So... Join forces, wise ass. Hey, wise ass. I know for a fact that you were messing around with Nina's PC yesterday. I have no idea who you are and why you suspect us of being involved in the bot and bombings. Were these usual circumstances, I wouldn't care less about a weirdo like you. Why do I care about you now, though? Is that Nina is now dead? Dead. You get it as an effing killed, killed by law enforcement. Soon enough, you'll have some serious explaining to do, and it won't be to me if you get what I mean. Lucky you. I'm not ready to continue this ridiculous battle or whatever this is. Now we've all made ourselves comfortable in the same sinking ship, I want to suggest something better than battling each other. You claim to be righteous? Then be righteous. Become a member of thought. You said you're not on the Gov side, so why not be on ours? Interesting. I thought he wasn't active anymore. I thought Mr. O'Donnell left thought. Now he's actively recruiting for the cup group? Makes his exit seem unlikely. Tr from initiate. Troubling. Very troubling. I am sorry for what happened, but answer me this one. How can I join thought when I'm already part of it? Send me your answer. Timelines.tna web. Is a member already? Why didn't we find any hints of his history of thought then? Clearly not his picture, but that's what he, we've got. That's not the dog we're looking for. Jesus, start taking things seriously, will you? <laughs> is that a friendly to get express security flaw news? Warrior of the Web. No comment. Birthday, June 23rd, 1912. Probably not true. Kind of old for a hacker. Perhaps he's a little green alien living in a swamp planet. And we're going to go ahead and not take him off any further. Disable. Initiate posted on April 16, 2017. And so it begins. The Web Warrior hereby declares the Data Wars on all of you. Data Wars? What Data Wars? Tell apart what's right or wrong about me in here and thou shalt be re re rewarded. It's a trap. Community, listen everyone. Initiate made a li little game for you. 
I call it Horn vs. Horn, and it will be available for everyone to play soonish. Those of you who want to play it right now, drop me a line and I'll get you invited to the beta test. So freaking close, darn it. This sucks. I lose at this every single time. Are you not entertained? You're cheating. No way, Jose. My game's entirely fair. You need to learn to play as much as you need to improve your orthography. Open letter to Victor Rosen. Dear Victor, you are my idol. I really admire you and your style. You've got an awesome tech company. You call your own and wear shiny sneak leather boots that have probably been assembled by children used... Used... Used Fakia? So many hipsters look up to you, wanting to be just like you, just a little bit more like you. There is not much more a man can want in life. Something is bothering me, though. As the bright star of the tech world, you've got to improve your security. Look, if I use a login like VR host and password da da da, it wouldn't be a big deal. No one would give a darn. But for a luminous figure like yourself, just imagine what would happen when somebody who is nothing as benevolent as myself would find these out and post them openly, say on timelines or in any other social media platform. Embarrass embarrassing, wouldn't it be? All I demand in return is to have a chat with you personally. There's something that has been that has been bothering me for quite some time now, even though I got a glimpse into Rose and Ivory Towers already. Of course he would have gone there. Everyone I know who's remotely into tech or programming wants to work there. Which is quite mind-boggling to me. They actually hire a lot of interns and only very few people ever get permanent contracts. You were never available, so let's give that another try. I use a chat tool called Silent Scream. I've written that myself, which will connect to any other chat tool. So use whatever you like. My nick for Silent Scream is Root. Lol, I can imagine Rosen kicking butts with his leather boots right now. WTF, is this for real? For real as myself. Tried the password, didn't work. Fake? He probably changed it as soon as possible. You ever get to chat with you? No, no chat, no message, no nothing. Bummer. I thought so highly of him. Interesting. That's right, I gotta go to Joseph Langley's desktop here. So, we got mail too. Joseph, helping hand. Joseph Langley to an unknown person. I have not been in contact with Abraham Goldfields for a long time. I cannot meet your demands. I will deliver additional information on members of the activist group Thought, only if you mind our agreement. Cassandra Watergate must be set free tomorrow, not a day later. given so easily. Let's wait and see where this goes the next time he talks to the members of Thought. Okay, let's look at his desktop. Not trash first. Nothing in the trash. Mails. Office. Request concerning investigative custody of my client. Dear Mr. Langley, regarding your request to release your client Cassandra Watergate from investigative custody, we unfortunately have to inform you that your request has been denied. Though it is true, Mr. Miss Watergate is undoubtedly not directly involved in the incident known as the Bonton bombings. We have multiple indications connecting Miss Watergate to a group known as Thought, which in turn, which is in turn associated with the alleged perpetrator of said bombings. Investigations have also brought up new evidence in the earlier case of the entry of a police officer, which demands reopening of said criminal case. Okay, no new information there. Our meeting. Dear Mr. Yang, I would like to thank you for the house for the business meeting. It was great to finally meet you in person. Your case truly deserves a dedicated and equally experienced excuse me, equally experienced lawyer. After some carefully conducted consideration, it is with utmost regret that I have to inform you I do not have the capacities required for a case of this complexity at, at this time. It would not be desirable to go into this case half-heartedly. I am sure you will understand my decision. Again, thank you for your trust and effort put into your proposal. My hope is to be able to work with you on a future case when circumstances have changed. Until then, I wish you all the best with your case. Ah, oh, we've got his bank account. 
and here's what he's responding to. Dear Mr. Langley, once again, I want to thank you for having been available for a meeting so spontaneously last Thursday evening. That's the one that got him in trouble with Cassandra. Although I do not wish to rush you, you will understand that in a case like ours, time is of the essence. Therefore, I wanted to ask whether or not you have already come to a decision. Interesting. Feedback on your request. Hey, Joseph. I've gone through your books for the third time this morning as you requested, and sadly I can only confirm what I told you earlier. You may not notice it right now because it's a slow decline, but you're on your way to hit rock bottom some black day in the future, if this business trend continues. Business isn't running so well, seems. Too few crimes, I suppose. We must be doing something right. Excuse me for sounding like a broken record, but these are... Th these are major issues I see. Apart from your number of clients dropping steadily, your expenses since the end of 2016, especially via that credit card of yours, went up by a whopping 218%. Any idea what the reason for that might be? Then there is this recurring donation that's been going on for some time. I can respect if you want to help out a friend or something, but you have to stop at some point. Seriously. If all these expenses are a must, well, I, I, definitely, I, I would definitely agree with laying off Mrs. Winters, as you mentioned. Due to the fact that your clients are dropping anyway, why have a dedicated secretary around any longer than needed? Or get her to work part-time, or find someone who will work part-time for a lower hourly rate, ideally. Ugly, but not our concern. Yeah. Okay, and sis. Browser history. History cleared by user. User is good about that, at least. Pictures. COP certificate. Act active support of the Children's of Pardons Foundation. A charitable association dedicated to the purpose of financially and materially aiding children in the war-torn country of Pardons. I've been skeptical about this foundation, but they have been officially approved as a beneficial co operation. I guess it's a good cause after all. Okay. Wet. Wed, 1993. Okay, he was married. Sundown Trophy. Oh, cute. Dancing in the Rain. Here. Oh, private. We never went to private. I need to ask you for a favor. From Abraham Goldfels. I need to ask you a favor. My dear friend in dubio, if I address you by the name once more. Ah, now we're friends. Maybe this friendship is worth investigating further then. I hope this mail finds you in good health. First of all, I would like to apologize for not having been able to write you as often as I should have. I hope you don't think I avoided writing due to asking you about ongoing financial support for Nina. It wasn't that. I should not have asked in the first place, and yet here I am asking again. He might have supported the Boston bombings, perpetrator. We have to investigate this further. Look for hints that there really was an ongoing financial support. There's a young woman, her name is Cassandra, who's a member of m my debate club. She has undeservedly stumbled into trouble very recently and requires nothing but the best defense attorney. And so the circle is complete. Of course, you immediately sprung to my mind after the wonderful job you did as my counsel in my case. So this is why they know each other. Abraham Goldfels was his client, which raises a connection to the question, what was his case about? Without a doubt, you must have heard about the riots at Freedom Plaza two days ago, probably also about the injured police officer. I will not beat around the bush. Cassandra is the prime suspect for said injury, so taking on this case might bring some PR headwind with it. She claims not to have done the deed, and I am willing to believe her. Should you be willing to take on her legal defense, I would be more than grateful. I will cover any costs in full, whatever you might need. Let me know your thoughts, Abraham. Okay, so that covers his computer.
listener. Chat session with Harrison O'Donnell. Hello? Why is this? Anyone there? Ah. So you found your way here, Harrison. Digging through your TL was a pain in the ass. Why didn't you just tell me you wanted to chat? When you told me what happened to Nina, I went straight on to research. I got the impression that the Gov is up to no good. Great work, Captain Obvious. I did find something, something you won't like a bit. Orwell. What is Orwell? That is a good question. Oh no, we did everything to keep it outside of the nation until we were ready for revelation. And now, it's unfortunate people have become aware of it ahead of time. We must tread very carefully now. They will not speak so openly any longer, I fear. That's a good question. It seems like it's a system that can put everything on the web under surveillance. What exactly do you mean by everything? Everything as in this very convo. Every call, web page, maybe PCs, whatever. You're BSing me. I'm not, man. I'm not. I wish I was. <coughs> Let's assume for a second you're right. How do they pull this off? Storage alone is one thing, but actually going through all of it, they outsource surveillance to people outside of the nation. Those people are supposed to collect pieces of data from websites, all kinds of communication and whatnot, and send to the Orwell mainframe. It's safe to assume that nothing is safe anymore. How come we never heard of it? Even more importantly, how come you have? I have very good connections to some hackers outside the nation. They knew a thing or two about secret recruiting for this at S without letting people in the nation know. Don't know how exactly to pull that off if they do. A real hacker network, huh? Unfortunately, we can't go after people outside the nation. That also, and that also explains what happened to Nina, I guess. This is so effing crazy. I. Do they have no decency, no effing respect for privacy? And for Nina? Hell, this is everything we fought against. Harrison, don't. You need to watch your tongue. I do not need to effing watch my tongue. Please chill, man, or we will regret it. Oh, I will never again chill until this madness stops. I already got an idea. Taylor made for you. Man, if you discuss things like this... Here, you'll get us both locked up. Let's meet somewhere then. Yeah, say the word and they will be there too. There must be something we can do to talk without the possibility of someone snooping around. We can't stand around doing nothing. Well, there's one thing. It's a bit risky. using my chat tool right now as well, right? Aren't you? Well, if I wanted to live my life in a cage and go live in an effing zoo, the system needs to be shut down. Yeah, it's abominable, but yeah, I am. This tool has a built-in cipher. It's a custom encryption algorithm written by me. Easy to break, but off record, and that's what we need. They probably cannot break this. Not right away. It gives us a couple messages, probably. What are you waiting for? Go for it. Okay, I'll activate it now. Just remember to write quickly. And keep your fingers crossed. This will work at all. I'm getting reports of un unknown cryptography here. Don't worry, Orwell should be able to break the encryption in mere seconds. seconds. 
One thing. What will you do with what I find there? Start a war on the government. Man, I don't know. You talk to Warren, that gives me the chills. You told me you don't have any love for the Cub. You were already part of thought. Now prove it. Your chance to do something with relevance to it, instead of hacking people's sites for fun. Oh well. Okay, fine. Time to get to work. Don't forget to be sending me your stuff. O'Donnell out. The National Beholder just published Oh, Bessie, for yourself. Oh, Harrison, Harrison. Uh, we'll look into it first. Your entanglements with suspicious groups. Dear Mr. O'Donnell, it has been brought to our attention that you have actively participated in suspicious groups in the past or present. I consider it to be unnecessary to elaborate how this is against the work regulations and our expectations of neutrality towards every journalist employed by the National Beholder. We hereby inform you about the immediate termination of our work contract regarding the National Opinion Column and any other articles, texts, or reports. side effect of the leak, probably. I wonder what else got into the T got out to the TMB, and most of all, who did this? Okay. Well, we got a lot of stuff to read here. Starting with the headlines. Is this group responsible for the Botten bombings? Botten. Botten bombings perpetrator Nina M. apparently was a member of an activist group called The Thought. Are they involved in the incidents? I imagine you're looking in my way now, aren't you? I have absolutely no idea who leaked this info. Certainly not me. Only very few people can access the data on our back end. This doesn't exactly aid us in our investigations. Quite the opposite, probably. We need to hurry. Is this group responsible for the Botten bombings? The group thought runs a blog in which, in which most articles are locked for the public. Has it been used for planning the assaults? It seems that the Button bombings perpetrator yesterday identified as Nina M might not have been working alone. Information leaked to us from a reliable source implies she belonged to a Button based group called Thought. This self proclaimed activist group seems to be behind a number of violent demonstrations that have been held around Button. One of the articles in their mostly locked up blog also quotes from the Gedanken sind free. The lyrics occurring in the letter spread prior to the bombings. If and how the group is indeed also involved in the bombings is left to speculation for the moment. We have already requested the administration's administrators of the blog for an official statement, but have yet to receive any formal response. Entry 9. Freedom is unfree. Let's see. Oh, they got bombed. They got comment bombed. So you're the guys who bombed the Freedom Memorial, huh? A hearty F you to you. I hope you efforts I have cancer, you traitors. I don't get why someone would kill people to get their message through. They will get you all arrested, every last one of you. Die in hell, bastards. Activist group, my ass. You are terrorists, nothing more, nothing less. You dare judge about life and death? Judge not lest you be judged. F you, F you, F you, F you, F you. Target for DDoS attack. Acquired. Server crash incoming. Screw all you punk. A bitches. You hide your articles? Why? You hide your articles? Why? <sighs> uh, okay, so. Sundown Fishing Club. Okay, welcome, friend, to the sport of fishing. Had a tough and stressful day at the office? Your boss doesn't value your work? Documents are finally up on your desk? We've all been there, buddy. That's why we founded the Sundown Fishing Club, a club dedicated to men who deserve to cool off after a hard day's work. We're not only into fishing, even if the name suggests that. We barbecue regularly to play cards and, or other games and have a good time in general. The Sundowners get together every Tuesday and Thursday, starting at 7 p.m. at the Savannah Lake, right between Botton and Fairview. If you're interested, come meet us at Lakeview Lodge on the south side. You may join the club at a very low monthly fee of $25. Come for the lakeside, but stay for a pint at the Sundown Fishing Club. Rules. It's very important that for 
for us that as, for as long as you consider yourself a sundowner to respect our rules, fish responsibly. Although a fishing license is not required at the Savannah Lake, we pay regard to the official fishing quota. If you're only in it for the catch, make the release so the fish can see another day. Otherwise, you need to record your catch in writing using one of our catch lists. Mind the environment. Our property is well maintained as a pleasant place for our members to enjoy. Always take your waste with you. Also, do not light fires outside of the marked areas. Never leave an open flame without supervision. Also, be mindful of noise pollution, so no loud music or raging parties. Members only. Potential new members may come and visit any meeting with a current sitting sundowner and will be regarded as a temp member while they inspect our offerings. Relatives, spouses, children, etc. may visit special public events only after registration or participation has been made. Don't forget to present your trophies. In order to participate in the Catch of the Month Award, you must present the trophy to the prize jury five working days before the end of each month. Contact for any inquiries, send the mail to Chairman Dan Kingsley via King... Fisher at sundownfishing.tna. Please do refrain from writing into the gallery comments. We will not answer any questions asked there. Thank you. Okay. Gallery. Ah, that's where this picture came from. Got it. And catch the month. The trophy goes to Joseph. A red band trout, 29 pounds. Congrats, mate. Oh, holy crap. That thing is huge. That was a large, fast fish. Congrats. Okay nothing really important there. Let's just roll through. Let's see if there's anything that seems interesting here. Okay. Oh, Abraham. Okay, 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 okay. decision of his life and joined us. Please welcome to the club, Abraham. Welcome, Abe. Don't ask. Didn't ask last time. May I call you Abe? Welcome. Saw you around the last time. Sadly, didn't have a chance to talk to you. We'll do next time. What? You're kidding me? I thought we were a club for men. We just let anyone in now. Is it? Is there any problem with Abe, Ron? You bet your ass there is, Dan. We never had a F in the club, and I prefer to stay that way. B.S. I talked to him all evening last Tuesday. It was perfectly normal. Why do you think this should matter? Hell yes, Norman told me he was practically asked out by him once. Proof enough that Abraham is gay, in my opinion. This is not of relevance, Dan. This is a men's club. Isn't it blatantly obvious what he's trying to do here? He, and he didn't even tell us right away. The secrecy is disgusting. Huh, this is a real bummer. Bummer. Gays don't bother me, but it's really something we need to discuss first. Ron does have a point there. Would you all please show me show, show some decency? You're discussing a man's sexuality in a public online photo gallery. Not only is that irrelevant to begin with, but it also does not belong here. Hella does belong here, Joseph. Why does he ha keep this hush-hush? He should have just told us right from the start. Maybe he's here only to enforce the quota or shit to begin with, so why defend the guy? We start accepting fags? I hate that word. We are practically forced to accept women and children, too. Th that wouldn't be the Sundowners anymore. Not the one I would want to be part of. I think leaving the Sundowners is an e easy thing clickbait, kickbait, isn't it, Dan? Now I get why your wife Barbara divorced you, Joss. It all makes sense. You like other men a little too much. My position as chairman of this club obliges me to a neutral position in this matter. I understand the argument, but Joseph is right. This is not a discussion to be held here. This has also become far too personal. It needs to be discussed between all current members. We will hold a discussion and vote on this during our next gathering. This thread is closed. That is interesting to note that Joseph Langley was divorced. Maybe not relevant, but still good to hear. I don't think we should mess with Mr. Langley's private life this much. This isn't what we're after.
want you out. Garbage, you are the thought. They get mind blown. If mother effers, teach me how to build a bomb. I need to kill some kid. Oh, gosh. I know where you live. It's not hard to find out, my dear. You know what I'm going to do now? I'll buy me a sharp little knife, then I'll get to your home. Wait until... Oh, man. This stuff... What sucks is this shit really happens. This is this is too close to reality of what happens to people in it. Oh, this bothers me. I'm not gonna read. I, I'm gonna scroll. But this this is too too, too triggering. I'm sorry. case file the government versus Abraham Goldfels. April 6, 2015, Goldfels Abraham, Langley Joseph, different defense attorney plaintiffs, the government of the nation, prosecuting community attorney, Jeffrey Warwick, Jeffrey Warwick, Benton Dis District Court. The defendant is accused of breaching the terms of an employment contract with the plaintiff. The defendant had entered on March 15, 2013. work for the government. Are you positive? This is a true surprise to me. I've never heard his name here. Never. Someone must know him if that's true. Why was he sued over a breach of contract? The plaintiff's claim was granted. Though a medical condition of the defendant could be proven by his physician, Dr. Daniel Lyons, the court could see no justification for the defendant's absence from work. This seems to explain a lot. He felt too sick for work, tried to get out, was charged for instant, and found guilty. Considering the facts that mommies are starting to look like a very weird kind of vendetta to me. High time we find Abraham Goldfels. Since the defendant appears to be in healthy condition at the time of the verdict, the court was able to recognize a breach of the terms of the employment contract, causing substantial losses for the plaintiff by the defendant. The defendant is sentenced to compensate the plaintiff by paying a compensation equal to his previous salary during a six-month time span. Additionally, the defendant must reimburse any salary he might have received during his absence. Note, this case is considered highly classified. No media or public is permitted in court. No media coverage is permitted, neither prior nor post-trial. Okay, let's look at your bank, Joseph. Last login was April 15th, yesterday. Okay. Le Mirage Restaurant, client meeting April 13th. That's oh, right, I'm, I'm thinking Abraham. It's not Abraham, we're, we're looking at Joseph's. Grape Swinus Best Wines, that's the uh, wine that she bought. Invoice, invoice. Recurring donation. It says recurring, we think it's to Nina. Aha, so there might be something to the connection between Joseph and Nina after all. If you find one last indication that this might be meant for Nina, that'll be enough for investigative custody. Excuse me, investigative custody. Unexpected proposal. My thoughts have been interrupted by a work proposal I consider intriguing, yet also disturbing. Dear reader, yesterday most uncomfortable inquiry reached me. Out of all the possibilities the universe has to offer, this is the one I would, would have expected last. The government has requested me to work for them. The government. The very same government bringing forth the dangerous safety bill, allowing to prosecute on suggestive evidence alone. I do not understand the nature of this call. They did their research as they were completely aware of my views and all my work at Stelligan. Why would they specifically call on me then? This got me puzzled to the utmost, and I cannot seem to work out what they would need me for. All I have been told is that my work would be needed on a large-scale groundbreaking project. Buzzwords bereft of meaning. Naturally, they would not elaborate on any questions. Naturally, I refused the contract. I have no doubt they will call again. Gold 
Bloomfield to refuse at first, then took the contract after all. Only to then breach it? Odd. Hey, Goldfellas, you can't be serious. I would not want to see you work for the government, Abe. Don't do that. Nothing good has ever come out of anything they have done. You do that and I am out. Your most loyal reader, out, out. Just like that. Seriously. My friend, I have no intention to work for the government. Yet I wonder what might be the root of all this. Whether it is something nefarious they have in store, and whether whatever it is might be turned into something good given the right treatment. Okay, we've got the central medical database. Okay. We have his date of birth now. And we have an address for him. Abraham's address. Well done. I'll request the team for investigation immediately. Somehow I doubt he's around. C continue your work. I'll notify when the team has reported back to me. Okay. Patient has reported increasingly nagging pain in the epigastric region he experienced for several months, especially during nights, combined with a feeling he described as similar to nausea. Patient also reported decreased appetite, resulting in a loss of weight over the recent months. Patient visited due to referral of his GP to exclude carcinomas. Sonographic localization of the upper abdomen undertaken shows a dilation of the bile duct in the head of the pancreas. CT undertaken to clarify infestation of lymph nodes surrounding and distant organs. Shows an infestation of periaortic lymph nodes. No pathological findings on their other organs. Blood sample taken to check for tumor markers. Awaiting lab report. Edit. Lab report shows tumor markers CA199. A carcinoma tumor of the, of the size of approximately 2.8 centimeters has been found in the head of the pancreas. Several periaortic lymph nodes, metata met metatastases, oh, cancer, have been detected. Distant metastasis on surrounding organs cannot be diagnosed. Unfortunately, the tumor has surpassed the state of being operable due to the metastasis found on periodic lymph nodes. The patient has been informed about this circumstance, as well as the fact that the average life expectancy is 6 to 12 months at this state of the cancer, though outliers with years to live exist, which he seemed to receive com composedly. Administering a palliative chemical treatment to improve the symptoms has been strongly suggested, but has been refused by the patient. That is so harsh, but it does mean this man has nothing to lose. Okay, looks like we've got everything there, so it's into the... Oh, he's been back. This certificate is issued to, due to Mr. Joseph Langley's outstanding ongoing financial support of our auctions over the years. Our actions over the years. I don't think it's... I'm going to say I think it's that. Oh, this is what the payments are for. Guess Mr. Langley is off the hook then. Harrison O'Donnell. Hey, hey. Hey. Seem the government just fired the first shots our way. Seems so. I thought they might take longer to trace it all back to thought. I didn't expect that the TNB would openly write about it. Those TNB efforts fired me. They did so quickly? Wow, they must have really loved you. Now, there's another thing. Cass has been arrested, her lawyer told me. What? F. 
just as I thought. It couldn't get worse. Yep, but it was about new evidence in the officer entry, not these bombings. Looks like some ugliness is headed our way from all sides at once. Think the police will follow this lead too? Of course, it's just a matter of time. Harrison. I'm scared. Yeah. Don't be. Did your hacker say something? Oh, that. This guy is crazy, completely nuts. I don't know why I ever thought of asking him. Don't get your hopes up. Oh, damn. What about the, this lawyer you talked to? Seems like we will have use for him soon. Joseph said he's busy trying to get Cassandra out. Understandably so. That son of a bee. What would you do if whatever her name was arrested, huh? What would you do if I was? Yeah, yeah, I get it. No need to lecture me, Jules. But Joseph did say he might give us advice if he finds anything. Yeah, of course he will, right after he sends us his invoice. You're not fair. We gotta face it. We're on our own in this. Wait a sec. Huh? He did just text me. Give me a second. Exactly what we feared. It's looking pretty harsh, yes, but I made an interesting discovery that we need to have a word about. Yes, I need to talk to you and your colleague, uh, Harrison? I was just chatting to him. I can set up a conference call. He's eager to meet you. That would be great. Give, give me a moment. He, did, uh, he wants to talk. I'll set up a conference call. Wait. You didn't mention the cops were wiretapping your call. Set it, your, set it yourself. Why not chat? I think a call is much more appropriate for legal counsel. Raises less eyebrows. And chats might be logged just as easily. We're just the average couple seeking advice, right? Couple? We need to do this. Don't speak too openly. Don't mention wiretaps, okay? I don't like this, but alright. Hello. Hey. Hey, Joseph. Seems this is working. Hello, um, Harrison, I presume? Yeah, and you're the law guy. Right, the law guy. Call me Joseph. Alright, Joseph. I just read about your group on the TNB. I guess this isn't exactly brightening things up for you. You could say that. So Jules here has a big has big faith in your skills. Joseph, care to elaborate on what you found out? Yes, okay. So you all know the safety bill. Yes? Yeah. All in all, it's an aggregation of paragraphs to get people behind bars much more easily and to pry on their lives if necessary. If necessary. No, they use it as a sorry excuse for spying on people all the time. Intimidate them. Yes, I understand. What's particularly dangerous about it for you is that individuals might be prosecuted by mere indication of threats to the nation. In specific situations, it'll be more than enough to point at a word you said in a rage to consider you dangerous. That's enough to hold you for some time. What's even more problematic for you is the so-called transitivity of indication. The what? You all form a group, an activist group. This links you with one another. Now, if there is sufficient indication that, say, Abraham created the thought to commit crimes or even acts of terrorism, well, they have grounds to arrest you all. But we didn't do anything. How is this just? This is so freaking outrageous. They'll twist and turn their so-called evidence until they get what they will need. You will need to be very, very careful from now on. We can do something about this, right? We need explicit evidence showing Abraham created the group to be peaceful. Prove it beyond any doubt. 
This is why I need to ask you about Abraham, to find out his original intentions. Well, ask away. The two of us were friends for a while, but I never got the feeling he told me a lot about what was going on in his life. He was quite reclusive. Indeed, that's what he was like, except when he was around thought. How was thought formed? He found out about me by discovering my blog, said he wanted to start a debate club. I said fine. A debate club then, that would be good. I could hardly regard it as a terrorist cell. Yeah, but it was obsessed with getting his message out, making people aware of what the government was doing. Okay, that could be misinterpreted. What about the protests? We went with Nina's plan for the circle ball. It turned out to be a catastrophe. And Juliet, at what point did you join Thought? During my studies, I met Abraham online by chance. He motivated me to take his course. Then Jules took over with the planning for the other two protests. seemed quite the charmer. Look at all the people gathered around him. So you would say Abraham intended violence and outrage? No, he hated, hated violence. He wanted us to stay peaceful at all times. That is positive. So was it an individual planning this? Did someone in particular incite this? False intentions and bad planning causes. You, Nina, me, each and every one of us is guilty of deviating from Abe's intentions in their own way. Jules, you don't know what you're talking about. It was Nina. She neglected Abe's wishes, not us. Harrison, nobody's innocent here. Not me, not you, nobody. Okay, I fear this isn't getting us anywhere. To make sure you won't be prosecuted as a whole group, I need to speak to Abraham. He's gone. We don't know where, and we don't know how to reach him. Sadly, yes. Oh, well. I need to get back to writing some emails to get Cassandra out of this mess. Of course, I understand. Yeah, yeah. I suppose it's going to benefit you two as well if Cassandra is removed from custody, so don't worry. I'll get back to you. Goodbye, Joseph, and thanks. Yeah, thanks. Don't mention it. Goodbye. User quit the session. Well, your lawyer wasn't too helpful. Come on, give him a rest. This is a complicated situation for all of us. Yeah, so what next? I suggest we meet somewhere in town and come up with a good plan. What about the old meeting place? You mean that place? Yeah, of course. We we need, just need to do something first. Don't let me, let me wait too long, okay? Yeah, see ya. See ya there. important to them, huh? Shanley didn't say. But arresting either of them is out of the question this time anyways. We don't have enough evidence against them. sure if I'm willing to believe that this is really contradictory to what Abraham Goldfels wanted. If so, why did he do anything about it? Our findings so far have shown that Harrison O'Donnell has been involved in the planning of Thought's protests. But since we know that Miss Matanova planned the first protest, this finding now leaves no room for him. Did we make a mistake? Was Mr. O'Donnell not involved in the planning? And we know why, don't we? He wanted to get out of that contract because of his illness, but the government would not let him. shall have one. We will have Mr. Donald arrested before long. I can at least be certain of that.
topic, how to start repairing my notebook. Juliet K. Oh, Juliet, are you going to give us access to your notebook? Hey, so I got this new notebook for my studies as a Christmas present from my parents. It was working fine until last week, but after a short presentation at the Media Department Expo, the damn thing just won't turn on anymore. I think something's loose on the inside. My dad said I should just return it, but I'm determined to fix this thing myself. So come at me, clever IT guys and gals. Give me some advice so I can call myself a real do-it-yourself notebook repair expert. I took a picture of the little troublemaker so you can see which make and model I'm talking about. Can someone out there tell me where to start and what I should be looking for? Thanks in advance. Have we tried turning it off and on again? Very funny. Ha ha. Anyone here give me some real advice, pretty please? Hey, Juliet K, I think your father is right. Best return the notebook. That warranty will be void if you make a mistake or open the case. Or you can bring her out to the IT admin's room A101. They'll take care of it. In any case, do not try to fix it yourself. Yeah, I get the concerns about the warranty, but I'm willing to take the risk. It's just that I hate to let go of an idea once I've settled on it. If you get what I mean. This is such a girl thing to say. Why you have to be just so stubborn? Listen to the mod. Dear Juliet K, I hope I'm allowed to speak a little off-topic. Frankly, I rarely browse through this board, but I saw your posting and believe I saw you last week at the Media Department Expo. Weren't you the one who held the short presentation on ethics and online media? I found this quite captivating. I'd love to invite you to my media ethics course next semester if it fits your schedule. Oh, and I'm sorry I can't be of much help with your notebook, but I'm very sure you'll fix it in no time. Okay, well, thanks for your kind words. Sounds interesting enough. I might stop by. Okay, so we've got another in. And, yeah, I'm going to mark the accusations about Abe as unimportant. I don't think it's important. Oh, it's, there's an unknown data chunk, though. So we'll hold on to it after all. So let's go into her desktop. Always check the trash first. Greetings from Copacabana. Orwell has lost connection to the main server. Okay. Connection to the main server has been re-established. Why isn't this working? Do you, do you see the messages? Ah, there we go. I just had a strange kind of connection problem. It was like the mainframe had vanished. Still got some data loss between the servers in here. Seems like it's all slowly going back to normal again. We had a joker who thought he could intrude our database. InfoSec says they averted the attack. Huh. Um, I would assume that would be initiate. Okay, Rosen. Material for PR. I rest my case, you're welcome. Syn syn synchronous over asynchronous communication. Go meet in person always. You're the best, Barry. Thanks. Hey, Juliet. Put a USB drive with the material you asked for on her desk. It's tons of documents including technical details and most of the specifics have been redacted by the clients. I hope Maria is aware of this stuff is so confidential that it doesn't even exist officially. No list on who got or is supposed to get which stuff, when and why. Don't get why PR needs this, but well, I won't stand in the way of Victor's grand vision of information sharing. Ask and thou shalt receive. After all, you had a key. Speaking of the devil, do me a favor and come around personally next time, okay? Even though you just start here this month, you, you for sure already you can, you can for sure already guess what Victor has to say about mail exchanges in the company, Barry. Maria asked me to get some specifics on a project with the internal code name Demiurge. I'll send the authorization key to access the rest of the info separately. Can you get her details on how it functions from a user point of view, the interface, the controls, and project milestone dates? We need the data by tomorrow on Ramey is overseas with the architect thing. The only other person who can get us that quickly I, I can think of as you. Care to help the new PR assistant out? Mm -hmm. 
Demiurge. Hmm, I feel like I've heard that name before, and I don't mean from Greek mythology. Still again. Your course. My dear Juliet, you are welcome to write me in any way you find appropriate. Frankly, I am happy about your open and honest message. Speaking to you, I got the impression that you're a very clever young woman who is afraid to believe in herself, which is a shame because I don't see any reason for it. People will always find a way to be cruel, to be judgmental towards you. That doesn't mean you have to take it to heart. Let me tell you something I rarely tell other people. I came to the nation from Greiblingen, a tiny village near Stuttgart in Germany, where I still have a family. It's one of those places where everyone knows everyone, without any exceptions. My childhood and adolescence were entirely determined by this atmosphere of being watched and evaluated constantly. It was made worse by the fact that I felt I could not live up to all the expectations directed at me. I ended up trying to be who people wanted me to be. It was maddening, abysmal stupidity, horrid for everyone involved. I would never want you to make the same mistake, but it sparked my interest in what I teach, so at least there is something positive to come from it. Come to think of it, I'm part of a small group of people who are just in line with the topics you're interested in. I am certain you'll find yourself appreciated there. I'll give you more information in person in one of my courses should you continue to, att to attend, which I certainly hope you do. Essay draft document. Dangers of the omnipresent digital information. The modern world is a transitory state towards omnipresence of digital information. <laughs> Excuse me. Processes, goods, even money transcend their physical form and continue their existence in the abstract form of data, mere units of information that either represent or describe the associated object. While this yields a lot of comfort, especially regarding the speed of exchange and accessibility to said processes or goods, naturally this also has a downside. In this essay, I will consider the problems that arise from the nature of the omnipresent and arguably omnipotent information. For this essay, I will focus mainly on two such problems, the unlimited reproduction of data and the interpretation of bits of this is all crap. This isn't the point. You can do better. <laughs> Sis. Browser history. Okay, we've been there. conducted a talk with the members of Thought. Of course, they claim to be neither involved in the bombings nor to be in contact with Abraham Goldfels. Thought was formed as a debate, debate club at first. Then it became an activist group. There is this Juliet Carrington who seems rather harmless, but this Harrison O'Donnell might well be a fanatic. Talking to them gave me the impression that he is Thought's leader, if one can call him that. He openly spoke out against the government and the safety bill. He se certainly seems to be the fanatic type. Observe him. Remember our agreement. Help to find Gunther Ahrens. There is always hope to be found. Missing. Loving dad and husband. Gunther Ahrens. Egypt. 
That photo seems to be like it was taken ages ago. Is that, that his child he's holding? Dot, dot, dot. How could I possibly miss this? miss this? I'm such an idiot. It's legitimate to change your name when immigrating, yet very few people do. That is what Mr. Goldfell's errands must have done. September 30th, 1993. He was reported missing in 1993, the year he immigrated. What did he do? My dear Gunther has been missing for several years now. One day, Gunther did not return from work. Colleagues and friends claim they have not seen him, nor have any clue where he might have gone to. We put all our hopes in the new, on the new possibilities of the web to continue our search and maybe find him someday. Gunther, I have not lost confidence that you are still out there. You would never abandon us. You wouldn't. I know it. If you ever read this, please call or write. Just give us something to know what became of you. We are not mad. We will never be mad. We are just waiting for you. Your loving wife, Margaret, and daughter, Eva Ahrens. Interesting. So this does conflict with the note that he was that the guy claiming he was gay. Uh, but is that is that relevant enough? I mean, it's on a gallery in a freaking. And it, it, it's a bunch of... No, Fred was approached. He, okay, yeah, no. No, I, I, I don't like that. That doesn't seem correct. And I mean, it may be relevant. But that's his family. Did he like leave them behind? Obituary is bought in week five one twenty six. Patricia Webster Goodman. Patricia Goodman, our loving mother, died peacefully on Thursday at the age of 83 at the Vaughton City Hospital. Patricia was born as the youngest of four children to a simple farmer couple, Anne and Larry Webster. She grew up and went to school near Fairview, where she met her soon-to-be husband, Ralph Goodman. They married in 1953 and moved to Vaughton, where she would soon give birth to Olivia two years later. Ronald, you will always be remembered. Oh, and two years later, Ronald. You will always be remembered as the light of our lives. Rest in peace. Rachel Whitfield. Rachel Whitfield was full of life until the very end. From the day she was born, and even today, Rachel brought smiles to faces wherever she went. She spent her life traveling the world as an aid official, trying to make it a better place. She succeeded. She went right into the hearts of the cri crises in Africa, yet Rachel had never asked for anything in return. I'm truly grateful for having met you. Gunther Ahrens. Deceased December 18th, 2016. You're telling me that we've been chasing a dead man all this time. This is this, this is downright impossible. I mean, he did write an email to Nina Maternova just yesterday, didn't he? Oh, I'm beginning to hate the fact that we only look at points of data without knowing the full story. The truth is in there, but I just don't see it. Damn it. Screw all this. Screw Orwell. I need to think. Look at the facts again. Just watch for a while and let me know if anything new happens, okay? Gunther Ahrens, age 63. So the report from the team at Abraham, Abraham's address just came in. It was completely abandoned. No furniture left, nothing, which is no longer a surprise, I guess. Gunther Ahrens, age 63, passed away at his home near Bonn. Though he was friends with many, very few knew the true person behind his gentle smile. Although his achievements in life were numerous, Gunther was a person always filled with self-doubt. That is no wonder, considering he, the world wronged him over and over again. Yes, he had his mistakes. He wasn't innocent. Who is? Gunther always did what he thought was right. He deserved better. I will miss you dearly, my friend. And Charles Haney, my husband Charles, passed away last week after years of severe illness and suffering. I spent my whole life with this man and still wish I would have had more time with him. I miss him very much. Still, I like to think of his passing as a redemption, and for this I am thankful. We will see each other again. Overview. 
the Orwell Project. With all the new people on site, proper introductions are in order. Why, hello there. Where did all these people come from? Might be due to the fact that the effing biggest newspaper in the goddamn nation just brought, published an article on us? Don't think they still had an audience that that large. The irony is not lost on me. We tried and tried and tried to get our message through, but whatever we did, it wasn't enough to get your attention. And now you show up on our doorstep, uninvited, yet still wanting attention. Welcome in. Being of you, welcome. Now that you are here, let's have a small chat, shall we? I've got someone here who is de desperately eager to meet you all. World, meet my good friend Benjamin Castigan. Benjamin, meet the world. On first sight, Benjamin seems like a fine man, doesn't he? He's 32, so in his best years, lives in a cozy house, even has a pregnant fiancé named Amy Peters. Never would you guess what a terrible secret he hides. Just with a few mouse clicks, ordinary people recruited from anywhere in the world make those mouse clicks seem as if it were all just a game. Then there is Benjamin. He is the guy who receives your data, has an elaborate look at it, and says, "This one. This is the one we put in jail. This is the one's life. This is the one's life. We're going to f up. That's one hell of a job, isn't it?" Now you might ask, where did this Han Hancock fella get this info from? The answer is from the Orwell Project itself, because the thing isn't even secure. No, I didn't expect you to believe me just like that. I'd like to propose something better. Go and ask Benjamin. Oh yeah, I almost forgot that you don't know him. No problemo. Here's his address. How is this possible? This cannot be happening. I need to go home. Now. If you'd kindly visit him and send him my best regards, that would be much appreciated. We'll take care of the bastards that sit on the other side of this Orwell project, who dig through all your personal files and grin while they look at your nude photographs. Thought is your friend. We'll get them for you. Promise. The thoughts must be free again. Hancock. for long and not again not this way i got you a gift though take a look on your thought web server handle with care
Based on the data you submitted, we have learned the following. We need to locate Abraham Goldfels. We have indication to believe that Abraham Goldfels instigated the Bonten bombings. We needed we needed to locate him. TMB suspects the thought of Bonten bombings. The National Beholder has published an article claiming thought to be behind the Bonten bombings. Thought perceived with hate. Thought was perceived by the public with hate after the TMB article. Attack on the Orwell mainframe. Attack on the Orwell mainframe occurred. Gunther Ahrens. He is friends with Joseph Langley. He was sued by the government about a breach of his working contract for being absent. He suffered from inoperable terminal cancer. He was obsessed with spreading anti-government ideas, which is why he founded the debate club Thought. Apparently, he changed his name from Gunther Ahrens. Abraham Goldfels was a name he picked when immigrating to the nation. He was reporting mis reported missing in 1993. He was married. He seemingly left his family behind when immigrating to the nation. He died last year, probably due to cancer. We searched his house. It's in a remote area of Farview and seems to be completely abandoned. Joseph Langley. He handed out, handed, handled a famous case against the government in the past. He received a request to submit information on Gunther Ahrens. He proposed to submit information on thought, not on Gunther Ahrens. His office is in financial trouble. He was friends with Gunther Ahrens. He defended Gunther Ahrens in a case against the government. We found no evidence that he financed Nina Madanova. Initiate. He's a member of thought. We found a lot of misleading information. He was placed at Rosen Technologies as an intern. He became aware of Orwell. He attacked the Orwell mainframe. Apparently, he was able to extract personal data. Juliet Carrington. We noticed she spent all weekend at Rosen Tech. I wonder if Juliet is an initiate. No, but they talked. She took Gunther Aaron's course after they got to know each other online, and, invi and he invited her. She blamed the deviations of thought's course on Harrison O'Donnell, Nina Metanova, and herself. She requested information on a project called Demiurge via her employer, Rosentech. Harrison O'Donnell, he lost his job at the National Beholder. He stated his intentions to declare war on the government. He became aware of Orwell and exposed personal information on Benjamin Costigan. Benjamin Costigan, his identity was compromised. Personal information was exposed. And with that go ahead and end this episode. I know it's a bit of a longer one, but we're getting near the end of the story here, this time for reals. But with that, it's definitely time for us to end this particular episode. I thank you for joining along with me. As always, if you like what you're, I'm doing here, please do me a favor. Make sure that you like or dislike this video. I don't care which. Click the subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. And do make sure that you leave a comment or some constructive criticism in the comment section down below. Also, if you find that not notifications are not coming through YouTube, I do send notices about all my video uploads via my Twitter, at BiscuitEaterYT. Now, I do appreciate you coming along on this journey with me. I hope that this is as much fun for you as it is for me. But as always, until we meet again, game on, lovelies.